Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you had a great week. This week we're gonna be going over lessons 37 to 40 in level E, and you'll need your worksheets um, 23 through 25, the activities for learning abacus, the drawing board, also known as your dry erase board, the T-square, the 45 degree angle triangle, and the 30, 60 degree angle triangle, tape, whether it's, um, we recommend 3M removable tape, because it doesn't rip your paper and you can reuse it over and over again. Masking tape also works. I'm going to be using just regular scotch tape today. You just have to be a little bit more careful and fold the tape over when you're done um, onto the worksheet. A sharp pencil, preferably a mechanical one. The fraction chart with puzzle pieces, the math card games book, and your fraction card deck and multiplication card deck. All right, let's get started. In lesson 37, um, we have an assessment. So last week, you, your student prepared for this. Um, you took the review assessment and whatnot. So this is no different. It's going to be a relatively easy day for you as the teacher. So other than the oral questions, you can just let your child take the test. And you can play a game uh, if your child would like to today. That would be great. All right, moving on to lesson 38. This is for students who have never used the geometric drawing tools before. So if your child has taken Right Start Level D, for example, they don't need to do this lesson. On the other hand, you know, some students are happy to review. So it, it's not a disaster to take it. It's just you don't have to because they already know how to do this. Um, so after asking the, war the oral warm-up questions, you will move right into learning how to use the T-square. And make sure to remove, if you have a coil bound workbook, make sure to remove this worksheet from um, the, the workbook. And that's true for all drawing worksheets. So um, if you're printing it out from a PDF, then obviously it's not a problem, but just remember to remove it because it's really difficult to do it while it's still stuck in the book. All right, so let's go ahead and look at how we're going to do this with the drawing board. So to figure out where to tape the worksheet, you want to go ahead and put the worksheet on your drawing board. See how I don't have it taped down or anything. Then place the T-square on top of your paper, okay? And notice how the T-square, this will be hard for you guys to see. Um, here's the T part of the T-square. I have it butted up against the drawing board. Let me go ahead and put a piece of paper under here so that you can see it better. There we go. That works. Okay. So it's hugging, this is what we call hugging the drawing board. It's not like this, it's not like that. It's right up against there and you're gonna have to keep it tight up against there. So you put it on top of the worksheet and you find a horizontal line. I'm gonna use this one right here on top of the hexagon as my horizontal line. And I'm going to line the T-square up. See how if the paper is crooked, I can't line it up with that line. So my goal is to line it up with the T-square. And there, that looks pretty good. Um, now I can take the tape. I'm still holding on to the T-square with my right hand. Take the tape. You could also just cut the, tape, the pieces of tape beforehand um, to make it easier. So you can see how having removable tape would be really handy right about now. All right. Now I'm not going to tape the, the page page down here because it can often interfere with the T-square. Some kids really like it taped there and actually it, it's not the end of the world if you do tape it there. But you can play around with it and see what works best for your child. Okay, so now that we have the paper taped down, I'm going to show you how to do this. There are these little bubbles over here on these two parallel lines. And those are just to show the student where they want to start um, their line. So go ahead and line up the T-square with the base of that bubble. And I'm going to use this Sharpie marker just so that you can see the lines that I'm producing. And those beginning bubbles are to just help the student see where the um, line should go so that it's spaced evenly. 
if your certain student is just starting out, they may have, you know, they might be making the lines a little bit closer than they should or whatever. It's not a big deal. It's just the idea is to learn how to use the T-square to make these horizontal lines. Now, if your student is left-handed, the T-square would be flipped around and lined up over here on the right side, and they'd be moving it along like this, right? Okay, so um, you just go ahead and follow the directions. This one says to make the horizontal lines making a ladder. This one is to draw horizontal lines to divide the figures in half. This is um, drawing diagonals. So a diagonal is a line drawn between two vertices. So the points of the polygons. So there'll be a lot of horizontal lines drawing diagonals. Okay, so it's pretty easy and it's very fun. Most students really love geometric drawing. So for most kids, the geometric drawing can be actually kind of challenging to coordinate the tools, the T-square, the triangles, which we'll go over in a minute. Um, but with persistence, most kids really become a pro at this and they actually love this particular section in Right Start. Geometric drawing is such a fun, um, experience, but it's also great teaching kids how CAD works. These are the tools that people have been using for a very long time to do technical drawing. And now it's computer based, but it's still based on this um, tool set. Okay. So remember, it is normal to draw the lines a little beyond where they should be. And this is more significant, say, when you're making a triangle or whatnot. It ends up kind of looking like a teepee, and that's perfectly normal, and it is expected that the child will need to erase. That's just a part of the experience. So if you have kids that tend towards perfectionism, they, they're gonna have to get over it because they're just gonna have to accept the fact that that is perfect. It is perfect to make a mistake in their mind and go beyond where they need to go because that's just part of the experience and erasing is perfectly fine and acceptable. All right, so once the worksheet is complete, ask the in-conclusion questions and then play Ring Around the Products, which is P32. You guys have been playing this for a while, so, um, but just in case you need to see a refresher, there is a video available on the uh, Right Start blog. All right, in, lessons 30, in lesson 39, um, students will, this is also for students who have never used the geometric tools before, but as I said, most kids wouldn't have a problem repeating these lessons, so it, it's probably not an issue. In this lesson, we will learn how to use the two triangles. So first you ask the warm-up questions to review what was learned in the last lesson, and then um, I'll show you how to use the triangles on the worksheet. Okay, for this one, it was very easy to put the paper on, tape it on, because it has a nice long horizontal line. And um, we are going to be using the 45 degree angle triangle to make vertical lines. This says draw the slats for the fence. So just like we were making parallel lines with the T-square yesterday, we're going to make um, vertical lines with the 45 degree angle triangle. Now there's a couple of tips. Notice how the T-square should be not lined up with this horizontal line and then have the triangle sitting on it because it's too high. You won't have precise lines. So you can move it down a half inch or more even because this edge of the triangle is quite long, so it's what's comfortable for your student. So I'm, I'm using two hands to move the tools. I'm using the T-square in my left hand and the triangle in my right to just line it up. And then I'm going to have to take over with my left hand, holding both the T-square and the triangle, making sure it's still butted up. So this is, or hugging the board. This is what I was talking about, how it might be challenging for your child. Um, coordination wise, but it's really worth the effort. So here I'm going to draw a vertical line from the dot up to the top line, and I'll move over a little bit. 
and draw another one. So these are slats in a fence. Okay. So that's how you can use the edge of the triangle to draw your lines. Okay. Then I'm going to show you, there's more exercises to do on this worksheet. Complete the octagon, um, draw both diagonals. Let's look at this one. So here, so we can use the edge of the triangle, and actually either triangle could be used for this, but since I have the 45 in my hand, I'm going to do that. So I'll draw the vertical line there for that diagonal, and then I'll go back to using my T-square to draw the horizontal line. Okay, so that's how you can use the 45 degree angle triangle. Now, well, I can even show you here on this one, we can do the diagonals like this on this octagon. So obviously you do want to use a pencil, not a marker like I am. The child will have to flip over. So see how I had the triangle going this direction? Now I'm going to have to flip it over to go the other direction. And then we could complete it with the horizontal line and the vertical line. For the hexagon over here, we're going to use the 30-60 triangle. So here we have the 60 degrees and the 30 degrees up at the top. And it's the same idea. You're just connecting the vertices. Flip it over. Go. It's pretty fun. You might actually want to do this yourself as the parent just because it's really enjoyable to do. Okay, well, that was fun. As you can see, I could not stop myself from completing it. Um, all right, so moving on to, oh, actually, so we should finish up with the in conclusion questions and then play the game of your choice. So moving on to lesson 40, we will review the basic fractions. But don't worry, the drawing tools will return in the next lesson. Whenever you have a fraction lesson, you ask your child, you should ask your child to build the fraction puzzle pieces, the fraction chart using the puzzle pieces, okay? So um, I don't always have the duplicate chart out, the, salt, the completed chart out, um, and I still ask my kids to build the fraction chart. It doesn't matter. They can look at it, but don't have them build it on top of the chart, okay? All right, so notice the language near the bottom of the page. When you divide one into two equal parts and you take one of those parts, what do you have? And your child will probably say one half, right? So you're going to write the one over the two, right, with a line in between, and point to the parts of the fraction. So you're pointing to the one and you say one, divided by, there's the line, so you point to the line, one divided by two. Okay, so they're making the connection that the fraction is a division problem. Next, your child will build fraction stairs. So those um, are interesting, and you can ask them once they built their fraction stairs. So they start with the one piece, and then they put one piece of every fraction all the way up to one tenth. So one half, one third, one fourth, etc. And you can ask them, could you walk up those stairs? And if they say, yes, I could, you could say, really, would your foot fit on that little piece at the top? What you want them to notice is that the difference between the pieces decreases the higher you get up on those stairs. So the difference between one ninth and one tenth is really small compared to say one half and one third, right? Or one fourth and one fifth. Those are significantly different, but the higher you get, the less difference there is. So remember that a unit fraction is any fraction with one in the numerator. That's the number on top, right? And a non-unit fraction is um, a fraction with any number on top that is not one. So like two-sevenths or three-fourths, 
okay? Those would be non-unit fractions. The game for this lesson is concentrating on one, and that's F3 in the Math Card Games book, and there is a blog about it um, on the Right Start website. All right, that's it for this week. See you next time for lessons 41 through 44. Take care and have a great week. Bye.